we're live, so I'm going to say welcome back to Steps of Freedom. <laughs> That's my opening line, right? <laughs> That's my opening. I actually was watching one, um, one of my own. I try not to watch them, just in case there's any critical spirit left in there. I just say, you know what, I'm just going to do it and let God use it. And maybe somebody will benefit from it. So... But I like how every one I go, welcome back to Steps of Freedom. I'm like, oh, I like that. That's nice. I'll stick with that. All right. So I welcome all of you. We have a couple of guests. I just want to say welcome. Renju brought a guest. And um, maybe before the end of the evening, you can introduce yourself. We won't embarrass you. And Naomi, she, uh, uh, Naomi, she brought a guest also. And so I won't embarrass her and say anything. Make a stand up. Have everybody get up and hug you, <laughs> which I always appreciated at the Pentecostal churches. I did. You go to a little church about this size, and they do praise and worship, and then they say, now greet your neighbor, and you're the new person. And you know what happens, right? It's like the receiving line at a wedding or something. <laughs> Everyone in the church comes and gives you a hug, tells you how wonderful it is for you to be here. Gosh, I love those days. Those are great. Before I knew anything. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are uh, talking about renewing the mind. I think this is an understated topic. Yes. Yeah. I think I took some classes at a couple of churches along the way that said newcomers welcome class or I never took a class to join the church. I just felt like I'm a, I'm a part of the family of God now and every church I belong there if they believe in Jesus Christ and, you know, our creed of the Bible. Um, but I did take a couple of classes like welcome to our church type of class or discipleship classes. I don't recall them making such an emphasis on renewing the mind. In fact, um, I know ministers, they're trying to get you to renew your mind by preaching. And they cover the scriptures. And they have certain phrases that they like to say over and over and over again. Um, now, of course, I'm not going to think of one. So I'm going to ask you, think about a minister you really like. He re repeats a scripture, and you got it memorized. Think about it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Right. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Praise the Lord. Right? They would say, <laughs> um, you know, if you're diligent, what's the one about being diligent? Uh, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Like I had a, a pastor one time that repeated that scripture, and it's in my head, right? No weapon formed against me. Um, so there are certain scriptures that you hear over and over and over again every Sunday for whatever, how many years you started, you know, been going to church. It's in there. <coughs> and so you might have a day that's very difficult, and at some point in the day you realize no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm going to be okay. What has happened in that instance, welcome ladies, you have renewed your mind to the point that it automatically thinks the scriptures. And who spoke the scriptures? Who spoke the scriptures? Jesus, or we could say the Holy Spirit, right? It says that all scripture is God breathed or God inspired. So, if we are to have the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. then what's our mind? What, what should we be thinking? The word. the word. The word. So I ask you to think about this question. Um, if you were a superhero, what would be your superpower? Anybody? So, and, and, uh, just Okay, use your imagination. Give you permission. Use your imagination. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? All wisdom. All wisdom, okay. So I could help in changing the world. Well, I had the knowledge of mm -hmm. what to do to bring about change. Right. Of course you're going to save the world because you're a superhero. 
Right, really Cheryl. Um, to be able to defeat the devil at every turn. Yeah, to get him in his tricks, right? Okay, being able to defeat the devil at every temptation. Yeah. Awesome, weren't you? Healing. Healing, the gift of healing. Oh, I hate to break it to you. You already got that superpower. <laughs> okay, um, it's not quite manifested to its fullest extent yet. Yet. Um, when I was young, my favorite superhero was Wonder Woman. Like probably many of you, I thought she was really cool. I look like her. You know, actually, my dad, he met Wonder Woman. I was a teenager, and when he came home, he said, you know, I met Linda Carter, and you resemble her. <laughs> and from that point on, every Halloween, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. <laughs> is she from Arcadia? Oh, wow, see? I'm not her. <clears throat> anyway, um, I, I many of you know I, I grew up, I went to college and became a teacher and we, in education you have to take a lot of classes, it's like a lifelong learner. It's drilled into your head, you got to keep learning, keep learning, keep taking classes. So I took a lot of classes, right? And sometimes the, the uh, exercise that we did was, imagine you're a superhero, what superpowers would you have? And I always had the same answer and it was to always make the right decision. I wanted the superpower of always making the right or correct or best decision. And knowing that you made it so you don't do double mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, just always making it. And I, and I had uh, to deal with some envy within myself because I would look at people, and this is when I was younger, I would look at people and I would see them, their lives appeared to be going very well. They made good decisions regarding a spouse. They made good decisions on how they dressed. They made good decisions about where they lived in town. Choices for a career. And, and I looked at my life and I was like, wow, I don't have that quite going on in my life. I did make one really good decision, which I think the Lord tricked me. It wasn't even my decision. He tricked me into it, and that was going into education. That was one of the best decisions I ever made, and I'm thankful that's, it was an excellent career, and I uh, loved it. <clears throat> um, and so I wanted to, and it's still my, my answer to the question, what superpower would you desire? And that would be to always make the right decision. So like many Christians, you know, we, we're told we get saved, we become born again, we, we give our lives to Christ, and then we go on with life. And we kind of bumble around and we make a lot of wrong decisions. We read the Bible. I used to read the Bible and, and I, I would read it every day. And I'd even like write a journal about it. And what did I think about that? I was trying to really get it in. But I still would make bad decisions. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I need, I need to make better decisions. I want to quote this scripture, um, Hosea 4.6. Most of us know the beginning of it. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Now we know that scripture, a lot of, most of us do. Um, my people are destroyed or my people perish for lack of knowledge. I've heard it, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times. But the rest of that scripture, not so popular. I don't know about you, but I cannot afford to be rejected by God. I can't. I literally cannot afford it. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't, I don't have, um, I don't think I have the stamina at all to go through life and being rejected by God. It's horrible. Even as a Christian, making bad decisions, and God loves me, but he's still withholding, that's tough. But imagine not being in the family of God at all and being rejected by him. Or worse yet, having a curse on your life from God, because that's what Deuteronomy says. If you're going to hold on to idols, 
people, places, things, or if you're going to hang on to your own will as an idol, he will reject you. And that's a terrible place to be. You'll make a lot of wrong turns, a lot of wrong decisions. So wow, we need knowledge. We have to get knowledge. We have to continue being learners of the word. It is the most important. It's the most important mm -hmm. knowledge there is. So <clears throat> King David, Solomon, Paul, James, you name it. So many biblical writers wrote about wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. I, I remember thinking when I, and I was young as a Christian, I remember thinking, wow, how does this person, how are they able to discern what's happening here? I could never figure it out. I was, I was like always blind to assessing correctly the situation or the intent of that person. Mm. Today, I met with a young lady who um, had most of her boxes checked, if you know what I mean, <laughs> on the intake form. Mm. And uh, 30 years old, and she had had a very difficult life. And she told me all about the life, and she did even break down at one point uh, in regret for the problems she was causing other people. Well, when it came to the time <clears throat> to repent of her sin, and I just happened to notice the two boxes of Marlboro cigarettes in her purse, <laughs> and I said, would you like to put those on the desk and repent of those? Are you ready to quit smoking today? And she said, no, I'm not ready for that. God, God, God works with us slowly. You know, he's gentle. He's kind. I go, he is gentle and kind. I said, but how serious are you? And so I'm not usually that, um, I don't know, in your face. But for some reason, I was. And it, it made me nervous. I was like, I'm not normally like that with people. But I kind of got in her face a little bit. She's like, oh, I'm feeling condemned. And I'm like, all right, well, I, I'm sorry, sister. You know, I don't want to offend you or anything. Now I know it was discernment. I, th I believe the Holy Spirit led me to, to address that one item of hers that she's still hanging on to. And it was a little test. Are you ready? Because, hey, I know. If the Holy Spirit comes upon you, I can, I can say get out in Jesus' name. We all can. But we can do nothing unless the Holy Spirit is present. And unless your heart is broken over the sin in your life, and you are ready to stop conforming to this world, it's not going to happen. Sadly, she left without any deliverance. She got offended. And even though I prayed and I asked her to forgive me, she still didn't feel right about how I was talking to her. I said, okay. I go, well... <clears throat> I go, that demon that's following you, it'll, it'll be out there. I go, but we'll be here. I go, here's Zoom. She took a picture. I said, get on Zoom with us. Um, come back Thursday night for service. I go, I'll be here. Come back Friday. We're here. Here's the miracle list. Steps of Freedom, check it out. You know, um, I'm not offended by her at all. I'm sad. Yeah. I'm sad because I know tonight she's going to have a tough night to sleep. Yeah. I know that. So, hey, Steph, you think we could turn the air on? Yeah, that's awesome. Go ahead, 74. Thanks. So in Romans, um, Paul explains that we need to do a few things to make right decisions in our lives. Our decisions must align with the Word of God. Romans chapter 12, 1, through 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, it's like he's begging us, you know, he's begging the Romans, brothers, sisters, please, by the mercies of God, present yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He uh, died on the cross for you after all. It's reasonable for you to lay down your life for him. 
And this is the part that's emphasized is do not be conformed to this world. This young woman told me how because she uh, was doing drugs, a certain type of drug, she had to go on another drug so she didn't have withdrawals. Um, I said, okay. And she's like, and they told me I got to do it little by little by little. I said, all right. That's the, that, I'm not saying that you should never do that. But here she is in the office here at the Arizona Deliverance Center, willing to give her life to God. We've seen it many times. Addicts come in. They get set free right then. They don't need no long-term plan to get off drugs, right? But she was still wanting to be conformed to the, the patterns of the world of here's the plan of getting off this drug. It'll take you like four months or whatever, 10 years. I mean, unfortunately, some people get stuck in that cycle. And I thought, wow, if we will not conform to this world any longer, then it says you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Wow. I think there's hope for me. <laughs> if I can know the perfect will of God, then I can stop making bad decisions. <laughs> and I can be a superhero. I like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, Paul also explained to the church in Ephesus, he said... Um, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Now you are Christians. I don't want you to walk, live your life like those Gentiles that don't know me, that don't know that I love them. They don't know that I have a plan for their life. They don't know about the power of the Holy Spirit. They're living their life according to their own good ideas, their own knowledge that they acquired, their own experience. They're not, they're not going by the Spirit of God. They're not living like that. And then it says, you know, in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened. How many times have you felt like, gosh, I'm just confused. I don't know what to do. Now, I'm not saying that's always the case that your mind is darkened, but sometimes... Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness, uncleanliness and greediness. He also talked about putting on the new man. He said, take off the old man, your, your former conduct. Your former way of doing things. I don't know about you, but before deliverance, it felt like it seemed as if I could not stop my former conduct. I didn't have the power to. He says, you know, take off, put off the old man. You have to get rid of that and put on the new man. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which was created according to God and true righteousness and holiness. You know, in life we, we make decisions, we deal with people, we go to work, we are, you know, we live and we have to make decisions and speak and, and go about life with a new mind of Christ. And so, as a new Christian, you know, you're not really responsible to have the mind of Christ at that time. Because you don't know anything. You just came in. Okay, great. Let's get you. That's why they have those new believer classes. And, you know, you should go to Bible study. And here's a Bible. Read the Word. And they try to get, come to church to renew their mind, right? Otherwise, um, we'll just keep making those old decisions. But now, as mature Christians, we are mature Christian women. We know a lot of the Word, but maybe you were like me. I had a difficulty applying the Word to my life, everyday life, my thoughts, right? You know, um, I'll write this. 
to put on the new man will permit your mind to put on the mind of Christ and gradually transform your thoughts to his thoughts. That's what it means. If you don't become a Christian, you automatically have the mind of Christ. Your mind is not saved. Your spirit is saved. We know our mind isn't saved because our mind still thinks crazy. <laughs> still thinks wrong. Well, that couldn't be saved, right? <laughs> but we can change our ways. Okay, um, there's some more scriptures there. You'll, you'll see them. Um, Second Timothy says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof or rebuke, for correction, Oh, I guess that's two different things. Sorry, I messed that up. For instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Um, I was told in the beginning that my Bible was the instruction manual for life. Mm -hmm. And it really is. But if you don't have the Spirit of God, you won't be able to understand it. Right. If you're still stubborn about giving up your old ways, your mind will be darkened. You won't understand it. We, we have to be willing. Um, so I just want to go over this last analogy. Um, there's some more things written in here. but So I think about the mind like a computer. Okay, So we know when we get a computer, there are settings on the computer. And there are default settings. You have the color scheme as default, the font size is a select size, the margins, everything, how it's arranged. Everything is set up. You turn it on and there it is. But you can go into settings, right, and go to the control panel and change things. But you have to physically go in and do it. You can't just go in and change one thing and expect everything to change. You have to go in, and in most cases, you have to go into the computer to change the computer. But then for the applications like Word, if you want your document to be a certain font size or um, script style, you have to go in and change every single little detail. And then when you close that document, you open a new one, you got to go in and do it again. That's, I think our minds are like that. You can't just, well, I read the Bible. I like to sing that. Well, I repented at home. I'm done. I, I'm good, right? Jesus saves. He forgives. I'm good. I'm like, I, I don't know. Do you still want to smoke those cigarettes? <laughs> if, you, if you willingly like put them on the desk, say, I'm done. I've had it. That's enough. I repent. I've been repenting. And I can't stop it. I would say, let's go. I'll cancel my class tonight. I'll stay with you. I'll stay with you as long as possible. In fact, I'll get my sisters praying in the other room for you. <laughs> yeah, that person might have got all the way delivered, huh? <laughs> so we have to go in and customize. The Holy Spirit's our helper. He helps us. Um, he helps us remember the scriptures. So we have to renew our mind. And so this part of this class and the, the list itself talks about renewing the mind. And it talks about um, some scriptures that are very, very important. And if you look on your page 42, you don't have to go there, but it's one item. And it says, read John chapter 14, 15, 16, Matthew 8 and 9. I'll let you get there. It's, I know, they're not numbered. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, it's, it's right on the same page as tongues. That's the page it's on. Okay. On that page, it's letter A, and it says, read the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15, 16, Matthew 8 and 9, and then it's got some other scriptures there from Mark. So, you all did some reading in this book, right? I hope. Mm -hmm. All right, about autonomic processing. And hopefully, 
you read a little bit more. This is a great book. It's a little technical, I would say, but it is, it's very good. It's very informative. Um, from this point, I would say for the next couple weeks, I want you to take this class like it's a, it's a class, a real class, a real college class. If you put in the time, you're going to reap the benefits. Now, I'm seeing several of you come either on Zoom or here in, at service, and you're getting touched by the Lord in a powerful way. And I really believe it's because you're putting the time in. Okay? So put the time in. Psalms uh, chapter 1 says, if you meditate on, his, on the Word, on the law of, the, of God, right? On the Word, if you meditate day and night, then you will be like a tree that's planted by streams of water. You will be well watered. So when the sun is scorching hot, when the wind is hurricane, when the storms come, you will be stable. I put this to the test. Um, I think it was my third year of teaching. Yeah, my third year of teaching. So I uh, graduated from Grand Canyon University, got my degree in teaching, started teaching junior high school, and uh, hated it. Every day, I was like, what did I do? Oh my gosh. You felt, I felt stuck. Every summer, I would cry. And I would be looking, what else could I do? I mean, you know, what else, what other job could I do? I knew I had just a couple of months to figure it out. <laughs> She's laughing. I was like, I hate this job. These kids are crazy, right? Because I taught science. So I had your regular ed. I had your uh, honors kids. I had your special ed kids. I had uh, your ESL kids all in one class. Oh, wow. Yeah, all in one class. I had them all. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was amazing. And I would have like 35 kids in my class. I taught science. So, so we had the, the chairs and then lab stations around the classroom. And um, I would have to write like four different lesson plans, you know. You have your lesson. You have the enrichment for your higher level kids who get it done like this. They're like bored. And then they start throwing things. And they're, they're bored, right? So you got to have enrichment for them. you got to have regular lesson for the regular kids. Then you have to have some lesser, le like... Out of 10, do three for your special ed students, um, special education students that are in special education, and then um, your ESL pictures. Okay. So it was like four separate lessons when we did lab. Oh, man, Fridays were movie day. <laughs> that was tough. That is a tough situation. It's a tough situation. <laughs> I cried every summer. I'm like, Lord, please, please. And then I read in Psalms 1. Um, in one translation it says, you know, whatever, meditate on the, on the word of the Lord day and night, and whatever your hand touches shall prosper. Amen. And I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to test you on this. And I'm going to read the word. I read it in the morning, and I read it at night. And uh, I went through the Bible in one year. I had a little schedule. And most of it, especially in the Old Testament, like numbers, I'm like, what am I even reading? I'm falling asleep. <laughs> I'm like, just keep reading, keep reading. And this person begot that person, and that person begot, and I'm just like, the genealogy is that long. And I'm just like, I just read, just keep reading, just keep reading, just keep reading, you know. Um, it was great to fall asleep to, but not great to wake up to in the morning. <laughs> so I did that. Um, that year of school was the same. <laughs> it's all right, but the next year, whew, the next year, and I didn't want to go to that school. Um, I offer, I was offered a job in a high school and a position to coach basketball, and I was like, "Yes, this is it. I'm going to teach biology. I'm going to coach. I'm going to be at the high school level. This is what I, what I went to school for." Yeah, no. The Lord said no divinely closed that door. I'm like, okay, okay. So I end up going back to the junior high school in Central Phoenix, crying all the way, like, I don't want this, Lord. 
Yeah. So it was a principal. He was a backslidden Christian. Mm. And he saw my resume, saw Grand Canyon, and said, let me show you the campus. I didn't even have to interview. Mm -hmm. He just said, come on. Oh. Here's your classroom. And for the next four years, I had favor. I am telling you, everything <clears throat> my hand touched prospered. It was amazing. Um, I don't work in schools anymore, so I can say this. So every time we had a holiday, I would be like, you know what Christmas, you know what Christmas is about? You know what Christmas is really about? <laughs> and I would tell them, and I had eight classes, and I would tell all my eight classrooms of students, and I'd pick out a piece of paper. If you'd like to write a little letter to Jesus, go ahead and do that now. <laughs> And so I had kids get saved. Easter, we talked about the resurrection. I mean, we had one girl, I remember her name was Michelle. It was the end of the school year. And I was like, you know what? Tomorrow I don't have to come back for a whole two months. So I'm just going to go for it. It was my last eighth period. And this uh, class I had, I did. I said, if you want to receive Jesus into your heart, on this half a sheet of, put your heads down, put your half a sheet of paper. I gave them all paper. I said, you write down. Yes, I want you to come into my heart. Well, this little girl, she said yes that day. She goes away, goes home for Christmas break. She comes back the next school year. Now she's in ninth grade, so she's at the high school. She comes back to see me at the junior high school, and she says, Miss, I prayed that prayer, and I told my family what you told us. And now we don't live in the shelter anymore. Ooh. And my dad stopped drinking. Oh. Four years later, she invited me to her graduation. This was a beautiful little girl. And you know, it took courage to do it because you could lose your job. But I felt empowered. I felt led by the Spirit. And I, was, and I made the right decision. And it was great. A lot of great things happened. Some sad things happened too. My dad died during my season there. Um, I did meet a young lady that I mentored for a very long time, Arlene. And now she's, uh, she's a real estate agent now. She's, she's done great things with her life. She's a Christian woman. She's beautiful. She's, I love her. So proud of her. Um, I met her at that school. And just a lot of great things happened. But when it was time to stop, I heard the Holy Spirit say, no more. And I obeyed. And it, I, for whatever reason, the door had closed. Mm -hmm. That next school year, that principal who I had tried to, <laughs> I tried to get him on the right path, but he ended up uh, getting in a lot of trouble. I think he went to jail, actually. Oh, he yeah. stole some stuff, whatever. I don't know. He did bad stuff. But um, the door had closed, and I had to be quiet with the students anyway about my faith, and I just had to show my character. But that, that is where I went back to school and got my master's in uh, counseling, and it was just a great, those people, I still remember a lot of those people, they were just wonderful. That was a time of being well watered. One year, and I'm not saying this always works out this way, but if you will give God one year, one year, it's not a lot of time. And you meditate on his word day and night. And you stay out of sin. And you get yourself to church. And you stay out of relationships with guys, ladies. Yeah. Okay? You're single. Just take a break. Just take a break. Give yourself at least a year. And just dive in. Dive in. He will move. This is word. You will become a tree planted by streams of living, of water. You will become that. And watch what will happen. Oh, my goodness. So it's great. Um, so there it is. Get into your Bible. Now stay there. I want you to get in there and read John and Matthew and Mark, those scriptures that are outlined. Um, so it's for the streamers. It's John chapter 14, 15, 16. Matthew chapter 8 and 9, uh, for Jesus healing mentally ill people, it's Mark uh, chapter 5, 
I didn't read the whole thing. It's fine. And then Matthew eight twenty eight, another example of Jesus healing. But why don't you just take a few weeks and just read that. Take a break from your morning devotional. Just take a little break from it. Take a break from that. Take a break from where you're reading. You're in the class. If you can, if you're comfortable, I want to encourage you, take a break from it and read the, letter, the red letters of Jesus. Just read them. Um, I know you will get revelation that you currently don't have. It's his word. It's his promise. So um, the next section in the workbook is on tongues. Um, I'm not going to teach on this. What I am going to do is just mentioned here that um, Jude 1 20 says, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. If, read this article, Mike wrote this article, it's from his website, okay, that's in here. Read it, it's an excellent uh, little article about speaking in tongues and the various types of tongues. So, in 1 Corinthians, when Paul is talking to the Corinthians, he he just had mentioned, I believe, yeah, he just had talked about the gifts of the Spirit. And it says various types of tongues with interpretation. Am I right? Okay. Various means more than one. So there is the spiritual gift of tongues and interpretation, one. So someone here, someone, you know, got up, there, whatever, they do the tongues, and then we should wait for an interpretation. Somebody may have the gift of interpreting tongues. Totally scriptural. There's um, praying in tongues, building yourself up. It's a private prayer. Now, we, we pray, like I know everyone in here, um, and we'll pray collectively in the Spirit, but we're all of the understanding of that. If a stranger walked in and heard us praying, they would turn around and walk out. <laughs> If a stranger walks in and hears the tongues and then the interpretation, they may become curious and be like, wow, that's amazing. How did that happen? Okay. So this says various tongues. So I just, I wondered this. Um, Mike talks about singing in the Holy Spirit. And if you've never done it, all you do is start speaking in tongues and you put a little hum to it. Just a little, just a little tune. I have a friend who takes um, Christmas songs that he's got memorized, and he uses the tune to like Silent Night and then puts tongues to it. <laughs> he's like, I know that tune by heart, so I'll just use it. I'm like, okay, that works for him. I make up my own songs. But uh, there's also, we practice war tongues yeah. in here. Yeah. How many of you have tried that? Yeah. War tongues. Remember, we were like aggressively... Some people left early before we got to that part. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. So war tongues is, I'm not going to demonstrate, but, you know, it's you speak in tongues and then you um, speak aggressively. You know, you can have fun with it. You can go loud. You can go soft, aggressive, sing, normal, various types of tongues. That's what I think it means. Yeah, um, it's very effective. I notice when, if I'm praying for someone in my office or even in the sanctuary, and I just start to pray in the spirit, and if I get a little aggressive, man, they're like, oh, stop it, my ears. Yeah. You know, the spirits in them don't like it. They hate it. They hate it. So it really has power. Um, so that's a good article by Mike. And at the end, it just says, you know, if you're not doing it already, speak in tongues throughout the day, on and off. You start to get racing thoughts, pray in the Spirit. Yes. Frustrated, pray in the Spirit. Get offended, just go pray. pray in the Spirit. Hey, feeling anxious, pray. pray in the Spirit. Do that aggressively when you're feeling anxious. Just get louder than the anxiety, is what I say. Because that anxiety can be loud, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't. I'm or my family, they don't understand. Go in the bathroom. Be really quiet. They can hear. The spirits are, they have excellent hearing. You know, it, you don't have to be loud. You can be soft. Mm -hmm. 
barely, okay? Um, so that's that. We, um, I want you to get into the Pigs in the Parlor also. How many of you read that book? Okay. You got to get one? Okay, tonight. Let's get one tonight. I think I saw them in there. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> okay, I hope so. Pigs in the Parlor. Um, I think it's chapter 12. Am I right? This hand chart. It's a chapter with this hand chart. And it has some lists of different spirits. You know, here at um, Hardcore Christianity or Arizona Deliverance Center, we don't talk about spirits by, like, the name of the spirit, except we do do that with the Kundalini spirit. Okay, we do say that name. But we really stay away from, like, the Leviathan or the Jezebel or whatever else. I don't know what else is Why? out there. Why? Well, um, we like to identify spirits by their symptom. So if I say Leviathan come out and that person has never heard of it before, how can they come in agreement with me? But if I say anger come out of there, manipulation come out, control, lying, lying right? If I'm saying that lying spirits come out of there, they can agree with me. They can be in agreement. That's good. So that's why we do that. Thank you for asking question. Yeah. Um, this is a great one. So in the book, it does talk about how, um, and Mike talks about it too in this book, that the goal of the spirits is to take over the mind. And so even though this chart over here, the double hands, is uh, says the schizophrenic mind, or the schizophrenic brain, I think it says. Don't be put off by that by saying, oh, I don't know how schizophrenia. Don't worry about that. It's the spirits are trying to get, that's the end game, is to get your mind completely. Because if you don't have control of your mind, you don't have control of your will. Right? We all still have free will, and we can make our decisions, and we can agree with the Holy Spirit. But if our mind is taken, then we don't have control over that. Okay? So, so that's um, Miracle of Six and um, list number six. And then tongues, I think, is number 16. So if you don't have the miracle list that I'm working from, so what I did was, and I think I said this before, but I'll reiterate, Mike has a miracle list that if you give him an email, he'll send it to you. One for, you know, regular troubled Christians and one for mentally ill. And then in our lobby, we have two lists. One is titled Steps to Freedom. It's a shorter list. And another one's called Self-Deliverance. If you look at all four of those lists, they're basically the same with just a few exceptions. What I did for the class to cover everybody, I merged them. If you want that complete list, email me at steps to freedom adc.com. Uh, sorry, steps to freedom adc at gmail.com. Just send me an email and I'll send it to you. And Marion, I got your email. I'll send it to you after tonight, okay? Yeah. Yeah, send that to me. That way um, you can go over it. All right, that's good. Um, I picked up the cards. Are there Manila cards back there? Oh, yeah, could I have those? Thank you. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on camera. Okay. Um, I thought it'd be fun. Do we have any cross-offs? You wrote on the card your prayer request. And now you're ready to cross it off because it got answered. Anybody? Anybody? Can you remember what you wrote? Yeah, I can pass them around. We add. Add it and cross it off? Yeah, sure. I don't know here if you want to look for, I don't know whose is whose, but um, any, any um, healing prayer answers? Anything? Anybody? Yes. 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 I got healed um, and delivered from vertigo. 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 Wow. How long were you struggling? 
months. Months. And now you're not dizzy? No. You don't feel like falling over? No. That's and I great. Can, I can lay on my back now on the bed before I could just lay on this one side. Oh, wow. And if I laid on my back, I would, I would get up in the room and just be spinning. Like really, yes. Like I'm watching it just spin and spin. <coughs> now you're healed. Yeah. Praise God. Awesome. That's big. Did you write that on the card? Yay, Renju. Gift and of healing. Me from other things too. The Lord did, not me. Yeah, yeah, the Lord yeah, does, the right? The Spirit in me. <laughs> right, He uses us. It's I... available to be used by the Lord. It's awesome. Thank you. You know, um, deliverance is not a um, what gift of the Holy Spirit. And not like uh, healing is or uh, the gift of wisdom, or the gift of knowledge, or discerning of spirits. It's not one of those gifts. It's something that all believers are called to do. It's part of the Great Commission. The deliverance. <laughs> yeah. Go into all the world, right? He says, preach the gospel. He did say, cast out demons, heal the sick. Yes, he, he said, in my name you will cast out demons. That was the first thing he said before healing everything. Yeah, that's right, in Mark. Mm -hmm. Mark 16. And so many people are, like, afraid of it. So, I was afraid of it, yep. It can be scary. Yeah. Well, it can be scary, that's why. But when you get to, when you get over that and fear, mm -hmm. it's amazing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, it truly is amazing. Any other testimonies that we could... That's a great one, Cheryl. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. I think I'm close. I've been, um, I broke this foot about five years or six years ago. Okay. It still hurts? It still hurts some, sometimes when I stand on it long. But I've been dealing with bitterness and resentment, deep-seated bitterness. Ah, uh, yes. Towards my husband. Good. And the more I dig out that the more my foot is better. Oh, amazing! <laughs> amazing! Her foot was hurting, and uh, now she's been dealing, you know, really fighting bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, and her foot is feeling better. It's good. I will share. I have a testimony. So I struggle with back pain, and um, I have uh, probably about four herniated discs in my back. Yeah, a lot. And um, sometimes I can move wrong and then it hurts, right? Mm -hmm. And so my hips are hurting, my lower back, and I'm like, do I have that kundalini? Darn it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. <laughs> and then I'm asking, who do I need to forgive? And I'm searching. I'm like, I've been asking him, what do I need to do? So uh, not last night, two nights ago. I'm tossing and turning. I, I can't. I'm laying on one side, then that hurts. I lay on the other side, and I'm icing my back, and I'm taking Advil, and I'm just, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is it? <laughs> so I wake up two nights ago, and I go, Lord, my back hurts. Like he hasn't, does, uh, as if he doesn't know, right? I'm like, my back hurts. What, what, who, what am I missing, Lord? All of a sudden, my mind starts thinking about these important things that I need to take care of in my life. Mm. important things I'm not gonna list them but these are important things that I need to do and I just been kind of procrastinating I have been procrastinating and so I turned on the light it's probably 3 a.m. I write them down on a little sticky note and I said Lord I promise I will do these tomorrow and I wrote at the top of my little sticky note back pain and I'll tell you what my sleep was so much better last night Mm. my hips feel better today I knew it in my mind I think maybe if I hadn't thought this would be different but I thought in my mind I'm beginning my healing right now because I'm declaring I'm gonna I promise you Lord I'll do them and amazingly I got every single one done on that list and I'm like yes I know this is the answer Sometimes, the, and I even went to the chiropractor, I had to repent of that, you know, wasted 45 bucks. Um, sometimes we just need to take care of the things that we need to take care of in life. The Lord has been saying, hey, you need to clean your bathroom. <laughs> Better do it. Seriously, right? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Did you say clean your bathroom? Your bathroom. Your bathroom. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you need to put all those clothes away. Right? Okay. Maybe you need to pay that person back that you have you loaned some you borrowed some money, you need to you got the money, pay it back. Okay, maybe it's going to cut into your food a little bit this week. Pay the person back. Get it done. Get it done. And God will give you extra food. You know what? God will take care of you. Maybe you need to fast a couple days. <laughs> Not going to hurt any of us. <laughs> right? Get it done. Just get it. Just write a little note. Ask God to help you. He wants to help you. And get that thing done. Because maybe that pain in your back or your neck or your gut is related to something that you are delaying. God wants to give you, but he's like, I can't give it to you until you move. I already told you to do it. So part of renewing the mind, and this will be my last thing. If you think God is not true to his word, you need to renew your mind more. God is just. If the Holy Spirit says, I'm leading you this way, clean up the stuff on your table, get it taken care of. That pile's only getting bigger. You may think that's just you talking to yourself, but it's probably the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to somebody. That might be the thing in your way. That, imagine that's your thing that's holding up the whole breakthrough. Wow. Wow. Just do it. Just get it done. All right, let me pray for us, and then we'll break into our groups, all right? And after I pray, we'll say goodnight to our YouTube people. Father, thank you so much for your word, Lord. Wow. Thank you for the ability to renew our minds. Lord, thank you that you have made it clear to us that we don't instantly have the mind of Christ. We have to renew our mind. You told us to renew it. Lord, I pray that you would help us be determined and even to the point of anger that we turn away from the things that are keeping us from getting into the Word television, social media, um, reading chapter fiction books, um, doing these other things that take us away. Lord, help us, show us where we can do it in the morning and at night. Lord, we want a better life. We want to walk in the abundance that you promise. So we commit ourselves to you. And we choose to worship you by following your word and renewing our mind. In Jesus' name.